Good evening, everyone. What a great pleasure and honor it is for me to be standing here in front of uh, Ved Nandaji, an institution and a great inspiration for all of us. In fact, I shouldn't be talking here at all. I'm here to listen to you, sir. So I'm going to tell you briefly about this screener. Uh, the thought of Kashmir files was born about four years ago. Vivek was on a trip to the US and he happened to meet Dr. Surinder Kaul, who apart from being a medical doctor is also a very prominent leader and activist of the global Kashmiri Pandit diaspora or the GKPD as it's known. When Vivek came back to India, he told me that uh, I've had this meeting and our next film is going to be on the Kashmiri Pandit genocide. We were busy with uh, the production of the Tashkent Files back then. And I, my first reaction was, what are you talking about? Because I hadn't heard about it. And now when I look back, uh, in fact, all through the making of the film, uh, throughout our research, it has been such a shocking revelation to me that me, I, I've lived in India all my life. I've been born and raised in Mumbai. But I hadn't, we didn't know that such a thing had happened in Kashmir. I feel very small talking about it here now. I also feel extremely betrayed by the government, by the media who did not let these things come out. So we started with our research. We spoke to a lot of Kashmiri Pandit scholars, historians. We went through a lot of books. We went through a lot of government reports. The late Jagmohanji, who was uh, two times the governor of Jammu and Kashmir, uh, we referred to his book also. But we still wanted some human stories. Because all this is fine. You know, going through the research is fine. But where is the real story of what happened to the people there? How they suffered? How they were made to leave their homes? And that's when we reached out to Dr. Call again. And he told us that there is a huge community of Kashmiri Pandits settled in the USA, in UK, in Germany. So we decided to take a tour. And both Vivek and I, in 2019, we came to US, we visited different cities, and we met the first family of the victims. We went to their homes, and it was the most painful experience of our life. For the past 30 years, all the pain, the anguish, the suffering, these people had kept it away, you know, bottled inside them for a very long time. And they, they had decided not to talk about it to anyone. So when we reached their place, we reached their home. They offered us the best of Kashmiri food, the best of Kashmiri uh, hospitality. And then we sat down for the interview. In fact, there has not been any human story available anywhere in public domain. So Vivek and I, we decided to treat this like a tribunal. And we'll go to the victims' homes. We'll interview them in long format video interviews. And so we started with our first interview. And one after the other, I can't even begin to tell you how horrible it was. One lady told me that the militants got inside their house. Her mama came running down. It's a maternal uncle came running down. He was shot. Then his wife came running down. She was shot. Then the wife's brother came running down, he was shot. Then the brother's wife came running down and she was shot. Four people in a row were shot down. There was a young man who was about 34, 35 years old now, so he must have been a baby. Both his parents got killed. His grandmother somehow managed to escape with her two grandchildren. And that man, he doesn't even know what his parents look like. Because when you leave, 
in the middle of the night to save your own lives, of course you don't carry family albums with you. So this man doesn't even know what his parents look like. There was a gentleman who told us that he was newly married. He, they had a little daughter a year or two years old. And the couple was pregnant again with their second child. And when they had to leave uh, Kashmir, they came into the Jammu camps. They were sharing tents with 15 other people. He had no money. All the money that he had was in the banks of Kashmir. And obviously, he was penniless here. How does he bring the other child into this world? So he and his wife, they decided to terminate the pregnancy because they couldn't afford to raise another child. One lady told me that her father was cut into 50 pieces. His, all the pieces were put in a sack and the sack was thrown in Jhelum River. And four days later, I guess they found some identity card in some pocket and that's how they realized it was a father. Very typically, we were doing about five to six interviews in one day. And the pain, the horror that I kept listening to was unbearable for me. And a point came when I just told Vivek, I said, I can't go on. Because I had stopped sleeping in the night. You know, when you are all emotionally riled up, how do you unwind? How do you go to sleep at night? But we had a job to do. And not just that, I had to ask some very hard questions because we wanted to get the truth out. I also, you know, want to say a big thank you to the entire Kashmiri Pandit community who trusted us with their stories. It's very, very difficult for any, now a young man, but a child back then, to come out in the open and tell us that his mother was gang raped and then murdered. But they did trust us with your stories. But I don't know how Vivek managed it. It's, he's a genius in that department. He somehow managed to put all the stories together. And in the film, of course, we have put a disclaimer in the beginning that in the respect of the dead, we have changed the names and we have uh, tweaked the timelines and tried to put many stories into a few characters that, uh, you know, the, the, the people see throughout the film. That's all the tweaking we have done. The rest of every single incident, every single conversation is based on true facts. <laughs>